Hello. Um, we left off with the snare, and this time we're gonna do uh, percussion. So it's not gonna be much different. Sorry, I got feedback, and I can hear myself, and it's kind of confusing. So sometimes, you know. Anyway, um, percussion. So this is very important. I mean, you want this to be solid and. Uh, definitely audible all the time because if you're looking to give energy to your track you in general have two options it's a, you got of course your kick and bass you want those to be super solid everyone's gonna dance to that so uh, but sometimes people underestimate uh, the power of percussion because percussion it, it flows, it gives the rhythm, it, it drags the whole song basically forward. It's almost the, um, you know, the person that orchestrates it. Uh, because of this rhythmic element, you uh, really can feel the music better, or at least the energy, energy uh, distribution. So that's also with build-ups. You always have snares and hats going crazy to that lead-up to create that intensity and then that drop after that. Normally it's just could be kick and bass or anything, but you know, then there's a sharp contrast between very intense, piercing loud. You don't want it to be too uh, intense, of course, but just enough, and then it just drops down to that very solid low. So how do you make percussion? Well, again, nothing really on the uh, group channel. And I divided it for now uh, into three different channels. And I must say that um, I'll probably add more later here because I like uh, a bit more complex percussion. I overdo it often which I'm trying to go away from because I also noticed um, less is more in this sense just what you have needs to be very solid um, just think of a band like how much does a drummer use how many different elements he has a kick drum well that's not important for us because we already have the kick uh, he has the snare which is also not important uh, important for this video um, because we already have it, so you have the tunt or the tunk, tunk, and then it's basically the tss, tss. Um, now in Psytrance, you have this very typical loop that is the bass line and the standard throughout many tracks. You could say the majority of the tracks has that sort of going on and you know for you beginners out there um, honestly it's nothing more than this is already a bit more complex I wanted to add a little bit of groove but if we copy this to here in general you could think of something like this so if we mute these these are the close hats you'll recognize this immediately oh sorry this one so to give you an idea with the kick very very basic but it works and it's basically always there there's like almost no tracks you'll find without this so this one needs to be very nice um, I used samples again I rarely ever for my standard stuff recorded I don't have uh, the you know mixing and recording in this room is absolutely terrible because it just echoes in all sides and not the kind of echo you want uh, the microphone I have is this one and it's a it's a decent one but uh, the recordings uh, you can find online are of much better quality quality so uh, you know I'm just lazy and use this I found this I normally use 909 808 for that very standard it's pretty usual it's nothing too creative most people do this uh, the 909 
808 but anything really you could like the trick from the snare you could add a little bit of um, white noise to it so I kinda wanna do that right now and as you can see I use a drum rack I use this just because it's easier and I can see here you know my pattern that I make um, without really having to go back and forth to channels I can just go and be creative in one little screen so that's a good tip make it in a drum rack and as you can see open hat close hat I have some claps but I barely use them and then the second closed hat that is basically uh, supporting uh, slash taking over the other closed hat when I want to have it a little bit more in the background and less present because this one is quite present and I'll show you now this is the rhythm so it's a kind of breaky rhythm and as you can see volume automation is quite important um, if we just so uh, turn this off you can these are all steady you could even make these a little bit groovier by going up and down a slight variation in volume in this case I didn't I want to just hit um, which is also nice but especially for closed hats um, you don't want it to sound like a machine gun you want it to sound you know a bit more natural it's n not really gonna be super natural but it is you know better than having that really steady it gives a bit more funkiness a bit more you know dynamics to it so very simple I left this one open because uh, the other one is hitting here so I try to not clash those and you could on your snare uh, lower them a bit so that if the snare hits that this one's not gonna conflict too much with your snare so we're doing that right now and I just know that the snare is here from memory so kick snare snares every eight so snare 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 and we're gonna go over this with every one of them and as you probably see I'm just doing this by hand so they're not gonna be the all same level but ish so I want that because that also adds a little bit to the groove maybe it works maybe it doesn't normally it works it's not you don't have to make a science out of it but it's best to do this in context so we're gonna do it now listen to it with the snare there's a filter on there I already set this up so um, this is pretty okay as it is but as I said find a nice one start with a simple rhythm as I did here I did one funk note just doubled it up and discovered that if I drop this one uh, it just gives a bit breaky feeling uh, that fitted with the track and basically copied that across um, deleted those here because I found it a bit too repetitive so then we have uh, four steps of variation and just copy this across so the rest you can ignore this is basically the loop so what I recommend what I always do is start with a really, really small one you can go here and then shorten it all the way and here I will set the volume I will make sure that everything is uh, sounding okay how I want it and then from there on I'll double it see if I can change a little bit so I came to the conclusion okay let's try to double this and then becomes a bit too much if I want to have it like you know absolutely like exactly uh, copied across it works but I like the break so just mess around you know just click and do and see what works 
spend a bit attention to this. It really pays off. Okay, copied it across again and decided, okay, I'll just delete him here completely. And there I have my rhythm. I just had these so that later I might even do some more, like especially uh, here. There, you can assume that on the end of every fourth step, eighth step, and sixteenth step, you can make a little variation and then it will almost always work because it's a key point of something else is going to happen you want small changes uh, the fourth and eighth step and then you can be a bit more creative in the sixteenth um, this is just a guideline this will work in most cases um, but of course you can do anything you know you can go wild um, it's good to find sounds together that already fit nice, so 909, 909, I can barely go wrong here, because uh, they're sampled from the same uh, drum uh, computer or drum synth, so, you know, this uh, already has like a character that fits together, but use your ear to find them together, but don't go stroll through samples and sample libraries until you find something because it's never ending and it's better to f uh, work with something that's kind of inky and just have a, a sample pack you know is decent what everyone knows vengeance you can start from there i mean it really doesn't matter um yeah hats don't really sound that different in general i mean they're exceptions always but you can get away with uh, pretty not creative stuff and still make something uh, kind of unique out of it uh, so make sure it is in the right uh, key you can do this by ear it's a bit trickier but um, this practice makes perfect because if I put this one for example so, let me, works as well but I liked it sitting a bit above the rest, so that the pierce is better, but also works. The reason why I did it at plus two is because in context with everything, uh, I found this just a bit more present, and you really gotta feel this. There's not really any easy way if you slam a tuner on it, because it's so high-pitched, you'll unlikely see... Uh, the key it's in see it doesn't do anything so there's no easy way than uh, use your ears and reference very important go back and forth listen in the mix if you are only listening to that hat you have no idea how it's gonna sound in the mix so you can find it and oh, okay that one sounds nice and then see how it sounds but always check back to the mix there's no point in trying to set all these settings without any, you know, uh, reference point. It might sound great in this, and then you put it in the track, and it just doesn't fit. So, you know, it's just a waste of effort. Um, processing of it, I kept it very light in the beginning, but because I wanted to kind of show what your options, uh, or at least what my go-to options are. Uh, I added some, but to be honest with you, with a low pass filter, it already actually sounded, you know, pretty good. So you want to get it perfect without having too much uh, in terms of effects. Of course, a filter and all that stuff. That's uh, that's another thing. But here, this is without any effects. It doesn't sound that much different. It's just, I just made it a little bit sweeter here. So, transient shaper. What this does is, and what you can clearly see in the exascope, get that up. So, 
again it moves this area a little bit to there so it's a bit louder in the beginning and it just slides out a bit easier so um, that just gave me the feeling it pierced a bit more it's always so important to get the the transient and the tail to be uh, you know, appropriately balanced and transient shapers in the case of uh, percussion are very handy I wouldn't really be using uh, transient shapers for kicks and basses even if you can there it's better to go back to the source but seeing we work with a sample here I don't have much option to really do that so and you can get away with more with percussion so now I set quite a fast um, envelope on this because I don't want to have the long tail that came with the sample you see like it, it goes on quite long and here I just want it to gradually fade out but quicker than it initially did so just by fiddling around I kinda did that see it's quiet and the cool thing is when I want more intensity and I want that hat or that you know that high hand to be more present I could automate this and then go from and then it becomes a bit more uh, you know intense so you can be subtle but you can also not be subtle so it's a cool trick there um, I always start with quite a uh, you know quite a not very aggressive one here I divided it up uh, to the mids and the side this is the center these are the sides and the reason why I did this because I do want to keep it very centered I don't want it to be not really in the middle it needs to be present in the middle but because I also want it to be feeling you know opening up the mix I kind of did this um, I don't think I have much on here uh, I used a stereo plugin again from Fuxengo to create that uh, that whiteness this is basically a delay so you can use a normal delay set it on a very low setting less than like 50 milliseconds and pan it to one side or the other where the delay is coming from so the original signal is say left the other one is right uh, this creates already a kind of widening effect uh, in this case we could say I just want to have the high part just on the sides and then maybe just boost it a tiny bit I think that's already quite a lot if you look here four and a half that's quite a lot so we'll be shy with that see what the center does now the center if this works with me also the low I don't want those uh, to clash when they come together again because I do something with one channel the face will not be exactly the same again so they won't even though it's high frequency and you have less chance of that happening just to be sure I kinda uh, just do this as a preventive measurement and it barely changes the sound so why not and lowering the volume because if you don't this will be much louder like now it actually is it's a bit softer than the original Wait, I'm stupid. Of course, we should listen to it with both. So it became much more high pitched. So we took off too much. So now it actually opens up only those higher frequencies, and that was kind of what I was looking for. Uh, we did a corrective. Um, EQ here it's probably better do that before everything it's very important um, your order of plugins because that influences the way the other plugins react to it 
So for example, if I put this in the end, it will first go to the transient shaper. So the transient shaper might add something here. So if I put it here, then this part works, but it might be because I'm setting it now in front of the transient shaper that it's not doing that mama uh, that much. And then I'm just correcting that again. So then it's counterintuitive. So let's see how it sounds before and after the transient shaper. And I think this was a very specific frequency I wanted to reduce. So it really was that one and I think in the mix that kind of appears too much and because I added this I think this one was the most present so I wanted to uh, accentuate that one to bring it more up front so that's why I did it and it might be because of how the widening and the stereo, uh, the transient shaper worked. This uh, frequency got too present, and I kind of want to bring that one up front. So, um, always, you know, if you see spikes in the channel, you can always try and reduce it with quite a. A tight notch so like it's a um, quite a precise cut and see how it sounds in the mix and then I normally compensate somewhere in that same region to uh, kind of compensate for that um, you know that reduction and then a good uh, rule of thumb is um, cutting do it steep and precise and boosting do it wide uh, this is to make it it is less of an invasion change you know um, you don't want it to be uh, really changing the sound much and then a snare as i said they're all the same volume and with this there is kind of when the snare hits here for example it might lower this one a little bit if the snare is not uh, finished yet but i bet that doesn't really do much it's just a safeguard also for when I start messing around and making build-ups that the snare is still the loudest so this is just actually uh, uh, just a fail safe and it barely reduces so that's also another thing and um, up the volume a little bit nothing too important a little bit of saturation put the drive on five reduced it by five so it's the same uh, volume but kind of fuzzed it up a little bit that's another thing um, the closed head kind of the same thing it's transient designer this is another one uh, I like this one as well you can see I upped it like 2 dB Just tiny bit, but just to make it a bit more present, cut the lows, dipped a little bit of the higher ones, because I felt it was a bit too present there. I also wanted to have that lower part, and I did this because these were much louder than the rest, and if I reduce that, I could bring up the rest of the volume. So that way, uh, the whole volume was a bit louder and the percussion became a bit louder. Well, simple kick so that if it's overlapping, let me see this one, that every time the kick hits, it reduces this one. So um, it doesn't really have an, a clash. Now, what I want to do is basically let it react to just... Uh, the low end so basically 
to the, uh, just until 700 hertz and it will only reduce when this is clashing which it likely is not again it's a fail safe I do this out of habit a bit of saturation and then a filter that I used for uh, making a little intro track we'll get to uh, that later and then I used this plugin and I added uh, very high tones by almost 2 dB it's quite a lot but um, this plugin works quite well in the high tones and that uh, just sweeten uh, up those hats a bit just a little bit and then again the compressor to make it duck I really want the kick to be uh, loud when it hits so um, yeah that's basically that for the percussion and I wanted to make some white noise for it so what we can do is add a MIDI track operator set it to white noise um, basically don't really need anything underneath 10 um, 10 Hertz um, we're just going for that very high frequency so I, I'm gonna have put it on the uh, the middle hi-hat I don't want it to be too long preferably just as long or shorter than the original one so I'm gonna keep it somewhere like this um, this might be quite loud and let's check it out very simple now um, I only need that initial you can already hear it's a bit more um, hi-hat sounding that's a bit soft no spread we could use some spread maybe we definitely don't need six voices for such a simple thing I'll put another EQ uh, with the filter I re re uh, we did like quite some work on the low frequency but here I can see it a bit better and all that stuff as you can see majority is missing already put that up and now this is um, you know you would say like why are you reducing the highest um, you want those high ones but normally this very high one it doesn't add much uh, it sounds full actually if you add a little bit lower and then cut the rest out and we're gonna try that and of course see if it fits with the other sound uh, again a small note with white noise it's atonal so you don't have to put it in uh, the key, same key I don't have to put it in D sharp doesn't matter it's so high it's uh, every and none uh, no no uh, key to it so let's hear it let's turn this off okay so of course we want it to play at the same time as this one so it almost falls away now without it see that's funny you, you barely hear it when it's playing but if you lose it it misses it so that really gives that very high and then just try to match the volume so somewhere around there now because I don't want to keep it in a MIDI track I am just gonna go back make it the beginning note make it very short we only need that part let's get rid of exoscope for a second now here I want this to be on resampling so it records what's soloed which is operator um, then we have to drag our MIDI clip into uh, the operator oh, 
made a mistake there should be in the operator I have an audio clip and resample turn the signal on record and there we have it so that's it make sure there's no fades reduce it to how long it is control J then you consolidate it we can get rid of this one again easier on the CPU um, but not only that uh, just make sure it doesn't get messy we also don't need this one we got what we wanted give it a name white voice and then we go back um, there we have the MIDI clip we can copy this one and paste it and then it should hopefully be pretty alright let's turn it off that's a little bit so I'm quite happy with that let's see how it sounds in the mix tiny bit but it's there and that's exactly what I want I always find things are the best if if you don't notice them but if they're missing uh, then you notice that something's missing and not the other way around that you want it to be there because if you do that it's normally too loud already uh, I put a writer on there to later create a bit more intensity I put this on the same as the kick so it's playing with the kick Add a little funky thing here so it basically does a tut tut of course much uh, softer than that one again make a four step two step one step and try to make a little change it can be one change don't you don't have to go overboard normally if you make it too complicated it's harder to fit the rest in with it because you already have such a complicated uh, and complex rhythm going on there's not much space for other things so keep it minimal and then you can add more uh, variations more instruments which you know spice it up, it much more up than if you would do it in one go uh, in one channel I um, I compressed or uh, side chained it to the snare so this one and this one are a bit lower Again, it's sort of a half uh, feel safe, not completely, and then have uh, a delay on it because I wanted to put it a, a bit more in the background and at the same time make it have more of a drive throughout. So without it, it sounds like this, and then with it, it's a bit more groove to it. Uh, bit more in the back but a bit more happening and then it pans so let's turn all this off and you can really hear the delay you see moves basically to the left and I like that idea so what I did on the left channel I also put a reverb and you see it's just a little bit to the left I can do that here as well this one is not necessary and why it's on 10 I don't know so because it was so high it's probably because it's very wet so to compensate a bit for that again I don't need the uh, utility for this but it's a habit uh, and then the other one is on the right and that's just dry so it hits and then the reverb basically goes to the other side and then I match the volume a bit just to create even more stereo widening and just make it a bit more interesting and then some EQ I didn't know need the low didn't need the high and I found this again a bit too uh, 
present and you can see it clearly this one is piercing uh, a lot so I tried reducing it with one of these yeah see it had a very typical sound almost like a distortion to it and it was the reason why I picked it and then later realized like ah oh, actually it's better if I don't have that there I'm sorry let me the group on it might actually work I might have reduced it a bit too much but I probably did this again in uh, while listening to the whole mix always to uh, get a bit of idea now on this you could uh, use a glue compressor just to tighten it a bit more find that sweet spot with the threshold you don't want it to work a lot just a little bit and um, you can skip maybe a bit of the attacks and then just glue the releases together quite a high ratio so um, you definitely want to don't want it to uh, push it too hard unless you're going for that but all those carefully set volumes you'll undo a bit so you know whatever it needs listen in context and see it normally ties it up a bit so glue compressor is great for that uh, the pie compressor I normally use for this Kramer pie because we all love pi. That's a bit loud because it ups the volume a lot. Make it slam it back like one and a half or something. Uh, makes it a bit louder, but let's see if it actually makes it louder or if it just sounds louder. So um, with it, it's uh, 13.38. Without it, it's so it up to it with almost a db so let's reduce it with almost a db 14 so now it's actually softer a bit more alright 0.3 so 7, 8, 9, 2 So it sounds a bit louder to my ear and it also is a little bit louder oh, very precise I think somewhere there it actually adds a bit of the lower frequency I notice so um, This one definitely reduces it a bit too much. Make it to its original volume right there. Barely anything. Sometimes wor this works magic. Sometimes you barely hear it. Um, again, use your echoscope. If you're not sure, use your spawn and see what it actually does if your ears can't find it sometimes you need your eyes to locate what's happening and then your ears can focus on that part and then you can also you know all of a sudden you pick it up or maybe you're doing nothing who knows so it gets a bit more transient which is actually good I think leaves a bit more space for the rest so that's a bit of the uh, percussion I have a crash on there as well um, that's nothing too fancy I think I'll make a separate video of the crash processing because it deserves it it's, a, it's also not the best crash I've done so I most likely will t uh, change this so don't worry um, I will go into that now uh, one more time have it all played together <laughs>
try messing with the base, but um, we'll save that for one, two, three, four videos, and then we'll get into arrangement. Um, this is all for this video. Um, I hope you enjoy it and maybe learn something. And then I hope to see you at the next video. Um, we're going to talk about ambience. I love ambience. Uh, I think it makes it much richer. So uh, stay tuned. And I'll see you there.